Hello and welcome to a very exciting News Round Bulletin. We're celebrating British Sign Language Day. I'm joined by Memnos, who's presenting the show with me, and he'll be using BSL to make sure everyone can understand what's being said. Hi, Memnos. Welcome to News Round. Right, should we get started with today's top stories? England's Red Roses have won the Women's Six Nations title with a huge 42-21 victory over France. It was the sixth year in a row that England have lifted the trophy and it was a third consecutive Grand Slam, which means they didn't lose a single match in the tournament. Well done to them. Moving on now, and with the recent news that the one and only Sir David Attenborough is taking a little break as the narrator of the BBC's Planet Earth series, who will be taking over the job of that famous voiceover? Well, Ricky might have the answer. An assassin bug. Armed with piercing mouth parts and sticky front legs. Sir David Attenborough's voice is unmistakable, isn't it? He really does take you to these far-off places. When our children have been given the opportunity to put their voice on one of his famous documentaries. 50 students across the UK were selected to become wildlife narrators, just like Sir David Attenborough. Three, two, one. But one voice alone is not enough. They were chosen from schools selected by BBC Children in Need as some of the biggest supporters of the charity. One, two, testing. Today, I'm in the West Midlands, where children are giving this a go. And they come in an extraordinary variety of shapes. I will become a voice for nature. So, Sana, how did it feel narrating one of Sir David Attenborough's documentaries? It felt good because not everybody gets to do it. What did you have to do? Can you talk me through it? There were some words just on there. And so then... you, had a, you had an actual auto cue, which is something I use in my job all the time. And what were you doing? You were reading the words? Yeah, and then looking at the camera when I read it. How did you find that? I was nervous, but <laughs> when I did it, I didn't, like, just had to read the words. And... You were very good. Welcome to a very special episode of Planet Earth 3. His voice is very iconic, isn't it? When you hear him yeah. talking like You know that. who it is. You and know you... who it is straight away, don't you? Narrated by school children from all over the UK. But before we go, I thought I'd have a little try myself. Here in the Amazon, there are hundreds of different species of them. But they also communicate in a remarkable way. <laughs> Wow, that is very cool. I'm definitely going to be watching that. Now, this week, some of you in school might have celebrated St George's Day with a bit of dressing up. He is the patron saint of England, but how much do you know about his life? Who was St George and what do we know about him? He's most famous for a story about him saving a town by defeating a dragon. Well, dragons are mythical creatures, so that one's probably not true. But what do we know about his actual life? Well, it's believed he was born in the 3rd century in a place called Cappadocia, which is now in Turkey. He became a Roman soldier but hated how badly Rome treated Christians. This led to him being put in prison. When he refused to change his views and go against his religion, he was executed. In 1350, King Edward III made him the patron saint of England, but he's also the patron saint of lots of other countries too. So how is St George's Day celebrated in England? On the 23rd of April, people go to parades and church services and there are often traditional English activities like Morris dancing. OK, next up, Memnos, have you ever had a question that you've always wanted to get answered? Well, here at Newsround, we love answering those big questions that just pop into your head. And now we've got a good one all about our eyes. Check this out. How come your eyes are so small, but yet you can see so far? By year six, Hamstall Junior School. The size of your eye actually has nothing to do with how far it can see. First, light passes through the front layer of the eye called the cornea and into an opening called the pupil. The iris is the coloured part of your eye and this controls how much light the pupil lets in. Say we are looking at a banana 
Light from the environment bounces off the banana and into our eye through the pupil, the dark spot in the middle. It travels through our eye that bends and focuses that light. This then hits the back of our eye called the retina. This is covered in very special cells called photoreceptors which by some sort of magic convert these light signals into what we see. Love that. Thank you to Dr. Maddie for answering that big question. Well, that's all we've got time for right now. All of your favourite programmes on CBBC will be signed today and you can watch My Life Can BSL Change the World on CBBC at 9.30 this morning or at any time on iPlayer. Memnos, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been so great having you in the studio. Don't forget, you can watch a BSL version of the Newsround Bulletin every weekday via our website. Have a great Sunday, and from me and Memnos, goodbye.